several bills there. need to find a way to condense the non-publics into one set of minutes is four. Uh, yeah. Do you want to do that in, in one? I think we could just keep it as an ongoing set of minutes and break out the discussion points, you know, next okay, possibly. As long as we don't have to, as long as we're not sealing. Sealing it, right. Yeah. If you we're sealing one, that's a separate document. Yeah. Well, there are two that are sealed. Are uh, they? Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing because it's Oh, you're just watching it. The squid's going to sit there and manage it. This post meter. If we ever get to the point where we needed to have more postage, can we increase it, or do we have to like do a whole new contract? Ask the question again, please. If we if we needed to increase the volume beyond what this is designed for, do we need to do a brand new contract, or can we just do an increase? I think we need to do a new contract, but that's just we're not going to need to increase the volume. What we're going to need to do is the instrument at that meter. Okay. Cool. Because the contract for the purchase is different than the contract for the meter. Okay. So we just purchase more. Right. Okay. Just so people, if there's anybody listening, that was an exchange between Chuck Fuller, Fleckman Fuller, and uh, Town Minister Brian Burke on the uh, postage meter. Where yeah, I just put it there for you to see the photographs that we to, to do it. So. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a point where you've got to pull the trigger, right? So it's been a lot of years. We'll try it. Uh, Thank you.
Children's Unlimited, Brian, Mike Cahallan, uh, Brian, Children's Unlimited get paid for yeah. I think we've got to be cautious there because I don't know where our bottom line is. As much as we approve these things, I'm not sure that they're the priority payments right now. I think we need to probably have a discussion about that. Um, anyway, so before we do any more, not that that was a bad thing to do, but before we do more, you might want to just talk about where we are and look at our financials, just, just to know where we are. I didn't see it in the, the books. Did, did you see the report from the lab? I <clears throat> meant to print that off, and I, right. I didn't, but I, I read it on my phone, and it was scary. Yep, okay. I, I didn't. I have it to talk about. Because I, I wanted to look at the documents, and I didn't get back to that one. And I, was, I forgot about it this morning when I went to look it up because I was running out to Pine River Road to. Look at the game for Miss Colbert. Down on Baylor Road. 
Oh, okay. Uh, just so you know, Chris, I went out to um, Tobin, and whoever, you know, they reported the tree was on the Simon Hill end. They'd cut it out of the road, and it wasn't much but a little bit of brush left off the side. Oh, it was okay. raining yesterday, so it's still, it's there, and it's probably the staying there, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Not that big of a... Maybe the neighbors took care of it. Somebody did cut it out of the road, yeah. So I appreciate it. I'll see about the baby road. Trees. Yeah, I'm all set on these. Yes, today to Go over there after the meeting, Brian. They look at the location. Yeah, this one says transfer station. Yeah. And, uh, it's like 16 bucks. That must be that way. There's two of them. Yeah, yeah it's first station. Right. This is a little shack. <clears throat> we have power to that? Mm hmm. We do. Why? Um, it was going to be used for uh, business. And I don't think it was ever shut off because when we went and looked at all, cleaning it out to set up the uh, cash register up there is still power there. So that's good. We could shut that off. I don't, we're not going to use it, right, Chuck? No, I don't see it. Okay. Maybe that's a to do list, Brian. Uh, the, little, the little shack up at the uh, transfer station. Uh, smaller of the two. Of the yeah. Room. I was need to meet it to make sure I get the right one. $16 and 21. Yeah. I should think that that's. Nothing's going on there, right? At the library? It's 117 or 118. Well, you still got the the heating system because it's the three monitor heaters. Yeah. You still got that even at set at 50. It's still going to come on occasionally. And you got the two two lights in the parking lot. What's
I must have a day throwing them away. <laughs> Don't make these uh, hot cook balls easy to find the location. Sometimes nope. they're in one spot, and sometimes they're. If you just flip it over in the corner, it usually says, like, if you just flip it on the back. Yeah, it did. It was on the back, and it usually has it under. Yeah, oh, there it is. It's up, up in the up. blue. Sometimes they put it under. Here. That is this location. Cancer station. Oxy Storage Road. I didn't see it, Brian. Hmm? I didn't see the um, storage road bill. Oh, this is the model. I think it was like $4,000. Storage road bill, he did not see it. Sorry. You got it? Uh, not yet. I'll flip through one more time. here. It says transfer station. It's here. That's fire station. That's the other little fire station. Transfer station again, that's the little one. Over there. Well, sir, do not see it at this time. I can show you the breakdown. Sure. I'll have to figure out where my fill fill in. Person for it. I think it was one sheet that was only like $50. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I 
think I saw that number in there, but it wasn't for that. What's the number? The amount? Yeah. 131. Tom, what do you have in there for? About 131. One more set of eyes. That's it. Through the other folders. It would, I, I went through the other ones already. I didn't yeah. see it in there. Okay. I saw the bill, so I know it came in. That's right there. Here it is. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Miss file. That's the uh, all shed? Storage road. Storage yep. road, okay. It'll be in. Yep. Okay. okay. I'll take it. Yeah. That's what happens when you take the clips off. Oh, nice. Blame Tom. I like it. I like it. <laughs> That was Brian Burke blaming Tom Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> that just goes with you. Yeah, yep, I get it. Can I take a look at that a minute? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was suggested in these trying times to shut the street lights off. May not may not be the worst idea. Five a month for the uh, postage. We'll find out if that yields its benefit. There are two. There are two companies that are on the state bid. This one in Pitney Bowes. Pitney Bowes, we asked the NIA to come, and they didn't want to come and talk to us. Well, they did, but she ended up going to the doctor. Remember, we waited. Yeah. And it was this company came with all of it, the same price state bid. Oh, yeah. And my um, new market counselor, she said, it's a 800 number, and it takes her sometimes over a week to get a response. 
There you go. Yeah. Bigger isn't always better, huh? Yeah. I'm away with that one. Before I forget, Chris, I think Gwen might have been dealing with the tree, except for the individual calls that tree on Grove. Road. Um, I've got, I placed two calls to a uh, representative in the last two days, which nobody's answered yet. A representative um, The tree service that handles that, so I'll be, I'll try to find out. As soon as somebody answers the phone, maybe I'll get a little more insight on what the uh, prognosis is for that removal or Drake that's Road. great. Yeah, 109 Drake Road is across the street from their driveway. I suspect that they're waiting for the green light at the cell company, which is too paying. Right, and that's why I figured I'd hopefully find out. Did you hear that, Gwen? I've got a call out to the representative from Lewis Tree. I called him a lot twice the last two days. So okay. as soon as I get a hold of that individual, perhaps you can give me a timeline and I'll update you. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Keep trying. Exactly. I think we got through all the file folders, everybody. All right, then uh, let's move into our agenda. And we have a manifest of $20,129.77. I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Hart. Um, <clears throat> roll call vote, all in favor? Couple or I. Tom Hart, I. Cahallan I. Um, then we have a whole host of minutes to go through here. So I have the April 21st non-public session, um, 91A, 
Well, I'll just go to 91A L for legal. Try and keep track of these. Um, make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Tom Hart. Roll call vote to approve. Chuck Fuller, aye. Tom Hart, aye. To have an aye. We have another non public. It's uh, 91A on the A. And I'll make a motion to approve. Have second. A second by Mr. Fuller. All in favor, roll call vote. Chuck Fuller, aye. Tom Hart, aye. To Hal and I. We have a, another non public. It's for uh, B and C, 91A, 3, Roman 2, B and C. And I'll make a motion to approve. Second, anyway. Second. Second for Mr. Fuller. Roll call vote. Please. Chuck Fuller, aye. Tom Hart, aye. To Hal and I. And. Another non-public, uh, 91A, and this is another A, employee-related issue. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Tom Hart. Second by Hart. Uh, roll call vote. All in favor? Full or aye. Hart, aye. Hal and I. Ooh. Now we get to the work sessions of April 21st. Uh, not work session, I'm sorry. The regular board meeting minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, second. Second by Selectman Fuller. Any discussion on the minutes? Done. No, nothing there. All right. Um, I'll make a motion. Well, I already made a motion. To Chuck Fuller, I. Thank you. Hi, To Hal and I. We have to cut down on these meetings. Did you get the work session one? Uh, yes. So, there's one more work session. Oh, very good. Go ahead, Chuck. You had a comment? So these morning meetings end up being way longer than the evening meetings? Yeah. So I'm in favor when we come out of this and take a look at going back to the evening meetings just so we get a life back. Um, I'm open to anything because morning seems to just be difficult for me. Um, and we're right back to full staff, so we can certainly have a discussion around that. I'm looking for your work session meetings. Because what was it last week? We were six hours, right? Yeah. yeah. Six hours. I think we take up more of the staff's uh, time. Why do I not have that one? Or did I screw that one up, Christine? Well, there's just so many. You had it. Yeah, I do have it. Um, I thought we signed it. There is a, uh, a work session from the April 21st that I seem to have overlooked. I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Second uh, button, Mr. Hart. All uh, right. Hart, aye. Hal and I. Right. So. One of the things I want to say that we're in the signature folder with the minutes were the property tax abatement. Um, dealing with Eversource was part of a contract signature from last year, and that was in the amount of 63334 That is the first of three abatements um, on that issue, and then we'll be out from under that financial obligation. Uh, do you want to talk about that before we move on, Chuck? Would you, do you want to throw out what you would like to do for meetings going forward? Since no, no. Okay. All right. Um, action folder, we had a uh, postage meter uh, lease that we're engaging with. Um, we had, uh, we're looking for a cleaning contractor for the buildings as uh, our present person wants to give that up. Um, Westy, did you have someone that you were suggesting? I did, but she's no longer interested. No, lo no longer interested. Okay. All right. I guess that's kind of an ongoing thing, unless somebody has a feeling that they want to entertain the, what we saw. This is Chuck. I think Chris said she's waiting on somebody from Limerick. Okay. And as soon as we get one more, then we just take it to second. All right. Someone from Laconia and Limerick. I'm just trying to contact. Okay. Laconia, we heard from Limerick. We haven't heard from yet. Laconia is kind of a long haul. They think. do a hundred mile radius. What they do, cleaning and um, really? Okay. And janitorial. 
All right. Well, I guess that old that issue stays open for a little longer. Uh, paving RFP went out. Um, we got things on uh, interrogatories for the um, high watch revocable trust. That property is uh, that's an abatement issue. Uh, and and the, the paving RFP was Green Mountain Road. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Green Mountain Road. Uh, that's a three mile section of an overlay. Um, don't know that we'll be able to manage to do that this year. I have my doubts with that, but we could get it contracted for next year, worst case. Um, I'm going to skip uh, ahead on two issues here so before we get into Brian's comments. Um, and it's on the uh, mail drop box or a slot for the window. Anybody want to? Chuck, I see you jumping right to some paperwork here. No, I did some research yesterday. Um, they actually can put a slot through a door. The problem is when I looked at it coming in this morning, because we've got thermal pane, as soon as we cut into that, that glass is going to fog up completely, so you might as well take the glass out of it. Um, it's too thin on either side of the doors to put the slot in there. The slot's actually a little longer than we have the width of the glass. So my alternative B, which I did homework on, and I was just telling Deanna on it, um, I went in to see if we could buy a used U.S. Postal Service collection box they used to have on the street corners. Yeah, I called Patty the postmaster on that one the, uh, last week. Yeah, and uh, what I found out is it's against the law for the Postal Service to sell them. So when they pick them up, they have to destroy them themselves, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but hey, that's the post office. Um, but there are plenty of companies out there that make similar types of boxes that are weatherproof and uh, somewhat burglar threat proof, whatever. You have to bump them down to the somewhere in like concrete or something like that in the walk. And they're about, I looked at three different sites and they're all roughly a thousand bucks between 960 and a thousand fifty. But that would give us a permanent solution then. So there was no option of going this way with the slot? You can't, but the problem is the window. We can't just make you it wood or you, you know, I don't want to do the, I don't want to take that window out and throw a chunk of wood in there. Okay. Yeah. I'm, It'll look cheap. I wouldn't do wood. If we did like a brass, an entire brass replacement panel. or something, that would, yeah, a panel, that would be one thing. Um, I'm interested in, the, where did you find out that the opening slot uh, is longer than but that was the question that the glass company guy did, was unable to answer. Eleven and a half inches in the opening, plus about a quarter and a half inch on either side of it. The AJ window, mm. which we, you and I were on the phone while he was here, yep. he determined that day that it was not going to go back. Okay, because when I talked to him after that, he thought there was it, it was a potential. He was not sure if it could go horizontally. It may have to go vertically. The problem with the vertical, no. you're not going to get the weatherproof. So the, the design, right. most of these are designed with a cover. Sure. You won't get the weatherproof. Right. Issue that we... Okay. So outdoor uh, box is probably where we're going to end up. If we need to get something bigger than what we've got, yeah. Because I, I don't think it's cost effective to try and start blowing holes to brick. No. To put a slot in there. I just That's too much money. No, if, if the slot in the window was a good option when that was floated, we all like that. But if it's going to have other drawbacks, you know, going to put a, a little concrete slab out against the building and putting a box against, you know, on lagging it in, that might be the better way. Do these, do these have feet that you lag down? Or? Yep. I looked at a few online. Ah, there you go. And that one, if that's the same one I looked at, it was about $967. Exactly. All Plus right. Shipping. Plus shipping. Plus shipping. A lot of money. Hello, Anne. No, they were, they were like 50 bucks. But it was, the shipping wasn't bad on them. But there were, there were a couple of different designs from a couple of different companies. But they were all similar to the old Postal Service collection boxes. And they're all made out of steel. They're all powder coated, rust resistant, paint, all that. So. Hmm. You want to take a look at that before we make a decision on it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> is, um, when? is that going to replace our 
mailbox? Or no. This is just for the public to drop off. The one we have out here now is the interaction between you and the, this office and the postal service. We can't look for like maybe some sort of combo thing where we can just. I. That one must have been I don't even think that cost a thousand bucks. You know, I don't want to spend two thousand bucks. No, it was less than that. No, no, but I'm just saying. I know. From a stand, right. from a standpoint of being able to get what I was told we needed to get in there, like plates and other things. Right, right, right. That one will solve the issue. So could we put a drop in that, in front of that box that's out there? Is that meaning the mailbox? Yeah, they would never allow that. So you're going to be thinking about going with the $1,000 box, is that what you're supposing? Yeah, because that's the, the most expedient option that will solve the issue. It's just too bad we couldn't do a combo box, like one mail and everything that people need to drop off in one box. Yeah. Not with it. I mean, it's just a thought. Just yeah, I don't it. think the USPS would allow that. No. What, to put drops just to drop, uh, have a drop Not in their box. box. They'd, have, yeah. they'd have to be separate. Yeah, you're not going to use the same box. That's postal service reg. You're not going to co-mingle them. We'll need our own box. The question in my mind is whether we need one of that size or if there's a smaller option, if there's something that can bolt up to where we've already got one that's actually yeah, weatherproof. Yeah, like the size of a library drop box? Yeah. yeah. Very similar. Okay. So do they have one like half that size? Uh, didn't, half didn't, I didn't see that, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Okay. I mean, I, I was in looking at three sites, and the way I had done the search, those all popped up with those size boxes, but I'm sure there's other styles. The problem well, I'm is being able to, to see if the state in has it on a bid list because they might for libraries and other right. agencies in the state. So I'd, I'd definitely like to do a little research. Yeah. And that's Brian Burke. He wants to see if the state uh, has them on the um, what is it, what bid list for state purchases. Mr. Hart. Yeah, Tom Hart here. Um, Ryan, you might know the answer to this. Will Beamer or any of these other things that are out there cover us, give us anything towards this? Or we're having to do this because of the COVID? I don't know the answer to that specifically. I did do the webinar on Saturday with the process for putting stuff together. Uh, and they're still trying to decide what they're going to cover. Okay. Apparently, they're not going to cover video equipment meetings that was specifically uh Fluckman's meetings was specifically ruled out uh, yeah. according to the webinar now they also said that may change but at this time that's not out of the covered costs um i'd have to research a little more to see if this might be yeah because i think we're doing this because of that so some things they're going to cover some things right now they say they're not going to cover are still in question that's all right, so uh, I, I agree that this is probably one of the ones that would likely be covered. Not that we know that, but it's a it's a direct response to the COVID. So um, yeah, do your homework and see what we can get. I know that uh, Deanna and others are really hoping we can get this solved sooner than later. So um, I think um, given your research, if we could sign off on something. Um, if you find something this week, selectmen come in and just sign off individually on what you find because this is one of those items I think that under the emergency responses that we should do. We need to get it going. Right. So we'll handle it that way. You got the office staff has agreed with what you, you've come up with and then um, we can come in individually and, and unless somebody is on the board has just absolutely got a reason we shouldn't do it. We'll just make it happen. Um, it needs to. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item. Yeah, sorry, but you, if you give me the direction, I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, purchase it. You don't mind, yeah. just let me see it first. That's, that's, that's a, <laughs> the point being, we don't need to sign off on anything as a contract or anything. So nope. certainly, yes. That, and that's, you find one, and everybody's agreeable by it. Yeah, make it happen. Um, and just under old business here again, I did jump ahead. Uh, the water cooler is the transfer station. My understanding is that was a purchase or a 
it came last year. It was new. It was in some sort of disrepair that we have now. It's gone. It's gone. It's been there for several years. It was not purchased last year. Mark told me yesterday that it was new last year. Yeah, that's what I found out. They had an old salvaged one that was gone, and then apparently we ordered one last year. I didn't verify, but he says we ordered a new one last year, and that is the one that was full of algae because of the placement of the unit. Right. And it's in the only place it could be in that building is on the inside of the building? And that's... What I said to him is, you, you put a like a box over it. If we just uh, they're going to bring a they're going to bring a sheet in. They're going to make a yeah a, a cloth covering for it. Cover it, and that should be good. But I'm a little thin. I don't want to buy a new unit every year. So no, I think the model water. Or the no, I thought there is, there's no reason why we can't lease it like we do with the other buildings. This, this is a leased unit now from Crystal Rock. It's fourteen dollars a month. Hot and water, cold cold water. Yeah. And then they get their bottles here, as they have been all along. But the lease is fourteen dollars a month. Chris, is there a maintenance with that lease? Because I was online this morning too, looking at different water companies. Also, well, the maintenance is: I want new coolers this year, and they come in and they just switch them out, which is what I do with this unit every year because I'm a germ freak. So I call them every year, and they bring in a new unit, whether it's clean, dirty, whatever. We get a new one. And really? do you pay for that? No, because it's covered. So you just say, I want the unit switched out. So that's oh, what we can do okay. as well. I'm feeling a lot better now about yeah. that. So that's the maintenance, is just bring me a new one and take the old one. Okay. Does this and get clean every month? I clean it. And the instructions that Chris uses to clean it? We're going to print, and we will have those up at the transfer station so the guys can clean it. So now this begs the question that the unit that was there was a leak. No, no. that was a purchased unit from Claudia was there. Okay. It was a purchased unit, I believe, from the U-Line or Amazon. All right. Well, I was just concerned that it was taken out, it was removed, cord was cut off, and, and if it was a leak. I'm seeing no. some problems, right? But it was it was not a leak. It was an independent purchase. Okay. Okay, then um on the subject of the water cooler, I guess we're going to get that extended onto our lease of all these units. Right? Yeah, and it's due to come in the first Friday. I'll pick it up. I'll take it up on Saturday morning. It'll be there. You gonna bring him water? Because if we just cover it over It'll be fine for a long time. I told them to put a pillowcase over it. That's exactly what they're going to do, based yeah. on your recommendation. All right. So those are the issues I really wanted to make sure we took care of. Um, I'll go to uh, Brian here for uh, whatever's going on he needs to share with us. Brian. You actually covered everything I was going to cover, so. Nice. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> Uh, I will ask you a question. I know that um, our budget committee chairman is back and in the swing and out about the town, so I'm, I'm guessing he spent some time with you. That's correct. <laughs> gently now, gently. Um, I think that he's probably going to want to review some items sooner than later. Um, Actually, I think I satisfied oh. all of his concerns. Okay. And I, I would... Yes. I would um, think that perhaps next week, either as a work session, and we'll we'll figure out what our schedule is going to be, but um, we should probably go through the budget again because we were working out the the final details. You were chipping away with a couple of little things that were bothering you on there, and just to have a, a final review of that to, to know we're on track, everything's where it is, and and uh, again, Dave's back in town, so we we got to. You gotta be careful here. We actually even agreed with Gwen and my guesstimate of what the school and county costs were gonna be. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so nice everybody That's getting really along. good. That's a, you've really got a good time. And Dave's got that number down. Good. Being on the same page is good. Um all right then I guess I'll go over to Tom. Uh you've got some updates I think for us, don't you, Tom? Yeah, um Tom Hart here. I spoke with Maureen Spencer on the welfare officer thing. We need to just put a 
some words. We had a, a lot of play in that we need her in here on the train, Westy. And then she will do the phone calls after that. She'll get Westy a day of training on Wednesday, tomorrow. That's why we need this letter. Mm -hmm. And then she'll go over what she can with her tomorrow. And then after that, if Westy has any issues, questions, she'll accept, you know, she'll take the phone calls. She does want to be compensated for it all. But yeah. No, naturally. We just need to, and she wants to be compensated at what she was receiving, apparently. Yeah. She needs that in writing and email to her. Is that something you can pull together, Mr. Burke? It, what, what her level of compensation is? No, we already know what her compensation is. No, the two issues that basically she'll train Westy and, she'll be, a, and she'll be available for uh, ad hoc calls at an hourly rate of. Just the basic. Just so she's got something on letterhead from us. She continues to get paid at her rate of, you know, rate of pay. Time. Do you want to, when Brian creates that, do you want to review it before he sends it out? So you, because you had the conversation with her? I yeah, think, okay. I think it ought to come from the board, not from the board. Okay, just, yeah, I'll just, okay. So also on that, we haven't come up with a, uh, a salary for the new one yet. That's right. So we need to work on that too. Yes, we do. We uh, will need to sit with uh, Westy. And perhaps we can do that after this meeting. And Conclude uh -huh. that, and she's going to be working in that capacity tomorrow. That'll work. Okay. The water heater at the transfer station. The water heater's fine. The switch is bad on the wall. The leather, red leather switch. Can we? Yeah, we just gotta swap out the switch. That's all. I get that. So that'll take care of that. And we don't have to buy a new water heater for another fifty bucks. Um. Up also at the transfer station yesterday, I got up there. I got up there a little bit late, but uh, I was up there earlier, sitting, waiting for the guy to show up to do the maintenance on it. I had to go do an errand when I came back. He was there. He had taken pictures of what he had already worked on for me. Um, I thought this service guy was great. He said he'd never been there before, but he went over everything and he even went back over things after I arrived. And he had pictures taken that he took when I wasn't there and all that. Uh, there was some there's some loose lines, um, loose spinnings and hoses. Wrong oil was put in at one point. Um, so I'm, so I'm not wrong oil because I couldn't stay. I went there yesterday too, but they um, were supposed to call us, and we never got a call. So I was interacting with uh, Amanda at Waste Management a few times, and then I had to run to Pine River Road uh, because we're, we've got issues there. But you said the oil was the wrong oil. And is that the oil, the machine we've been having trouble with repeatedly? Yes. They came on the machine. Yeah. Right. And they, someone said, oh, just from the burning off what was spoke before. We right. Didn't have enough. What's going on over there with that one there? There's no thermostat on that oil tank, the holding tank. So, and there isn't supposed to be one, but if you use the proper oil, the oil that they recommend, waste management, it wasn't used last time out. That is just heating up like like he explained it to me. It's like an oil fry layer. It's just heating up, heating up because there's no thermostat, and this oil breaks down faster than their oil that they're using. And their oil, you don't need a thermostat because of another reason. The freezing point is down up for it to not work is minus 42. So they don't use a thermostat with their oil, and then you don't get that. You know, cranked up there. You know, the oil will take the heat that it can, you know, needs to. So he changed out the oil. I no, guess. I'm getting to that now. No. He didn't. He didn't know it wasn't on the sheet, and I re looked on the maintenance sheet, the checklist. Nothing on there about oil change. This is just an AM basically just a spec and a maintenance inspection. Okay. He's coming back between the middle and the end of this week with the oil. He didn't have the oil with him. And he's going to change the oil out in both machines because we're not sure what's in this one. Yeah, I agree. So we're just going to start fresh in both of them with the correct oil and the new filters in there. And um, he'll change the hoses and the fittings when he does he change the oil. Only because if he took them apart yesterday, he would have to drain all the oil and he didn't have the oil with him. Yeah. So that was that. So he should be back before the end of the week is what I was told. So I'm also going to send in a report. I don't know if you received it yet. From waste management? I haven't seen this morning's email yet. But. Okay. I'm going to send a report here for us to look at of what he did, what needs to be done. There's things that are going to need to be done next year 
that, you know, we can look at and prepare for that too. Uh, I don't know the cost of what they're going to be, but just things that need. Then in two years out, there's some other parts that need to be replaced. He figures. Well, that's good because we we spent a lot of money last year, and it sounds like we're obviously spending money that wasn't well spent because now whoever they sent from the other company didn't seem to do a very good job, and that was an ongoing issue that led us to hiring this company. Yeah, they, he was really tough. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about him, but just the, you know, you know around service guys, this guy was good. He was top of his game, I thought. So can, should we change oil on an annual basis? That's mm -hmm. a good question to be asked. Because if I did. If his oil lasts two years. Okay. okay. There you go. All right. And that's the, that's the other thing I, I think we need to establish out of this is a maintenance program as we're going forward yeah. with this company. It sounds like we could do that. Yep. Uh, Christine, did you have a what question? What was the name of the company? Is this this is Waste Management. Management. Yeah. Um, what about greasing? Because uh, one of the ongoing things that comes up is Mark actually goes in and greases the machine which is probably something that we would like to get away from having Mark doing that. Did we get any kind of... Uh, no, I didn't get any feedback on that with him, but the thing is, and I'm questioning, I'm not, I mean, Mark's doing what, you know, yeah, no, he's supposed to be doing, but he's using cooking oil on the runners. Cooking oil breaks down pretty quick. I don't know, you know, if it's, you know, we could, I guess, ask waste management what, they do use in there. In, in, in cooking on, on what exactly? Yeah. Uh, so well, I know a part that's the rails that are going in that slides in, that Mark gets in and greases. Yeah. So. I think we, they should have something as a recommendation from waste management. Yeah. yeah. What we yeah. should maybe, be using. Maybe it's something they put on there that lasts longer. But Mark doesn't have to do it. And and I don't know what this telemark needs to be done at that point that he does it. I don't know if he's hearing noises or what, but I'll ask him on that. When this report comes in, perhaps I'm hoping there's a contact number on there and the text name, and perhaps you could um, get the, the questions that we have, contact him and find out what we should be doing on our own and perhaps if we shouldn't be doing anything and get the answers to how often the greasing should take place and what kind of lubrication should take place. Well, I, I, I don't mind. I'll go up and, like, Someone can call me if Matt can call me when this guy gets there. I'll go back up and he's changing the oil. That way I can spit over the phone. You know, did we have? A, he didn't have a definitive date for returning. Either Wednesday or but before the end of the week. Okay. Did you? It wasn't going to be today. I know that. Did you share with Mark to? Mark was there. No, to call you when? Oh no, yeah, because this I just okay said so I wasn't going to go back to the oil change, but now there are some questions, and I'll I'll go back. All right. Hey, all right. Um, I see we got a thing here. I had this down on my list about phone lines coming in here to the office. I tried yesterday uh, to get a hold of the office here, and, and you know they, when they're busy, they'll, they're on the phone. That's their jobs, and I couldn't get through. I ended up just getting in my car and driving down here to ask. Yeah, and. This happened before, and I've heard other people complain. I can't get through. I can't never get through down there. I, I personally think we need landmines, and I think everybody should have the a phone with you know under their name. Like if I want to talk to, uh, well, you do pretty much, but if you know you, Wesley had her phone, so it can be just you know who you're calling. You know who you're gonna talk to with both phones. I think we get a better shot of people getting a hold and not getting all ticked off because we can't get a hold of the office. Oh, I'm going to jump. When you start buying uh, TVX systems, those are expensive. What about just regular landline? Just like... When you start talking about going in and getting individual lines for individual people, mm -hmm. that's an expensive proposition. And if somebody's calling in that needs something and they call the wrong line and leave a message, that's even worse. So, because here she got $42 per line, free installation from pole to building, right? Yep. So, that would be that's a phone line coming in, right? And then it would branch off there. You heard that. a line coming in with voicemail. Yeah, $42 per line. Yep. You, 
your phone systems internally have got to be able to handle all that with multiple lines coming in. Will they handle them the way they are, Brian? Say that. Multiple lines? Yes. You have to have some kind of a switching mechanism. No, no. Will them. these phones handle multiple no. lines? No. No. So that's, that means new phone purchases. So that, then you've got a switching system that's got to be part of that. I don't disagree that's where we should be, but I'm not sure. Awesome. That'd be one of the things I would say, get ready for the capital improvement committee discussion and put it into the discussion in the fall for the budget for next year. But I was not aware until I read this document that Westy prepared this morning that we don't have a voicemail rollover in the event the line's busy. I, that to me was like table stakes. That just should happen, period. That shouldn't even be a discussion. Um, well, I was, I've been trying, and I've talked a little bit with Selectman Foley. I've been trying to decide whether voice over IP would be more cost effective than consolidated. Um, but given the ability to get Spectrum to sit down and talk, uh, that's been difficult. Now, I've read some emails, I think, from Selectman Foley going back and forth, but he's now talking to a government representative from Spectrum rather than the business representative, that might be more effective. Um, but in reality, probably the best price in the long run is going to, if we can do it, is going to be voice over IP. Uh, right now, that Spectrum, I don't know what it, it will look like after this consolidated group does whatever they're going to do. If we need this to happen in, in the near term in the next few weeks, ain't gonna happen with Spectrum. That's right. And I feel, I mean, of course, that's the only way they can communicate with us. They can't walk through the door at this point. It might change in a month, but it might not. Yeah, and my biggest frustration is trying to listen to the message never fails. You can't get the whole way through the message before the book. Um, I'm gonna weigh in a little bit on this. One of my concerns is, is again, like, Selectman Hart is landlines. I, I just feel more comfortable with them still at this point in time. Um, if we needed to augment our systems with um, something else, maybe. But landlines are kind of where my comfort zone is right now. Most every other town hall that I'm aware of around here, you call in and you get the prompts and you, you move on to who, you know, extension, whatever. Uh, I don't know what that would cost. But I like the idea of being able to get a hold of Gwen for assessing, Chris for just about everything else in that office. Brian is going to be contacted by, um, and I don't know if it's a direct line to you or not, Brian, because in this town, I think everybody wants to talk to the town administrator, and I don't think you're the front line here. You're the last line uh, that people should get in touch with. Uh, maybe you just do a better job of screening your calls, who calls in, or, or other people take your your call, whatever that is. Given my difficulty hearing, other people take ten, calls, ten and then I, if it's something I need to call back, I call back on the hearing enabled operation. And, and uh, okay, and then uh, with the Anna's office, you know, there's two lines in there, but there's two people in there, not two lines. And, and there again, I have experienced over the years, my frustration trying to contact the office and I had talked to uh, Claudia about it for years. She never wanted to change. She, well, the, the less communications, the better it seemed to be. And, um, you know, I, I get that sometimes it can get overwhelming, but uh, I really think that we should communicate better here. Um, so I don't know what the money aspect would be, and I don't know if it's a capital improvement item or not, because what is the actual expense? I mean, what level does this rise to? So I guess without better numbers, I don't, I don't have a clear way forward. A voiceover IP is a landline. It's just moving over internet. It's not like Verizon wireless. So and, and now, having said that, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm having difficulty deciding which is the most reliable here. Consolidated landline or Spectrum's landline. I've had difficulties with both of them at times. Um, so I, I'm not trying to make a decision or 
influence, but I just want you kind of sounded Mike like you were well, thinking. The cable company is my non non landline to me. It's like the cable always seems to be the cable different. Is the I, right, I, but I. In my mind, it's not real. <laughs> you know, it's not a real landline. It always seems to have issues. It is a real landline. Yeah, it's a land. when it, when we had uh, the tornado came through, it, it was forever before that came back online, and it seemed like the the phone company was up and running in short order. But, um, There's a lowest line on the pole. There you go. You don't usually get taken out. Sometimes you have um, prepaid things there. I do think this. I understand. I just got handed this sheet of paper this sure. morning, also. Yeah. Um, but they're forty-two dollars a line at the line to the building. We still got to do the research on the switching mechanism right. and what's available. And the last time I looked at that was several years ago. And uh, I'm sure everything has got cheaper and, <laughs> and easier to install than the old PBX system. Okay. But it takes, it's going to take some research to figure that out. I thought you were being facetious there, Brian. You're actually <laughs> serious. Uh, <laughs> now, the last time I actually looked at these, I was working for the federal government because we have to put them in in every single disaster recovery center that we fire up. And that was one of the things I had to look at on the security side of it. But that's been five years since I've worked for them, and I'm sure things have changed uh, and become simpler and cheaper. Well, it's certainly not the highest uh, item on our priority list, but it, it, it worth, it's worth looking into to me. I don't, I don't know where everybody else is. What's the staff? How does the staff feel about this? I said it really neat. I missed a conversation with my staff, but it would be a commitment, too. So if you're in the work of something else, it's going to be stuck with this. So, so this is not just as simple as getting another line that we plug into in our office getting another line that they plug into in their own. I mean, to me it is, but it's a bigger commitment. So, so you, Brian, and you said we need other equipment that transfers? Well, to do, to once you get the, let's stop back up just a second. These two lines will roll to each other. The phone company can make that happen. But you're going to have to have two phones. You're going to have to have a different type of phone than what we've got. That being said, to have a phone system where you dial one number and then you get a prompt that says if you want to talk to the tax collector, press one. If you want to talk to the town uh, administrator, press two. If you want to talk to the assessing, press three. That's not included in this. Right. That's something totally different. And I'm kind of hearing that's what you're all looking for. And that's going to take some research. Right. So we need something as soon as possible. I'm wondering, is there such a thing as when our phone is busy, they can at least leave a message? You should be able yeah. to have voicemail yeah. without right. an existing line. Yeah, one would think so. Could I have permission to get that? It's free. It's free. Yeah. It should be there now. We oh, could oh, probably never set it. up. Okay. How, how do we go about doing that? Call them? Yeah. Go online. You can probably look at spectrum.com and. No, no. Spectrum is not. It's, it's consolidated. Oh, we're at consolidated. All right. I think if we all speak, speak at once, we're going to confuse anybody that's listening. So, uh, um, Brian, to you, uh, the voicemail option, that should be something that's easy enough to obtain. It's there. Uh, should be there with our package, correct? I don't know. Okay. I don't know what package was negotiated when these phones were put in that. They were all here when I got here. Right, and I think we get a discounted rate, and I don't know that any changes will affect that or not. But we're going to have to, we need to be able to do business in the modern world. So, um, what are your primary, to Deanna, what are your primary needs right now? That's, People being able to get in touch with us. But you need, we have a line for you in your office. Right. We have a line for the selectman's office. Those are the two lines we have, two separate phone numbers. Do we need to expand that? Or? If we could, everything is being done via the telephone. We have to give people instructions, and we have people come three, four, five times. Sure. For the same instructions. Then if they so they're signing up the line. Because all business right. is now being done over the phones versus 
first of all. Right. Okay. So, so our phone is tied up because we're not going to be able to do it. So face with the test. They're calling us asking questions. Uh, understood. So face with the that the the constraints of our present system and the need to expand it now. Chuck, Brian, anybody have any ideas on what would be a, a, a reasonable response to that? Well, West, this is Brian Burke, and West has started some research. I think the first thing that I'd ask Westy to do is disappear. He's on the phone, that phone again. He's on the phone. The first thing I'd ask her to do is get a whole consolidated and see if you can have if the line's busy, it goes to a voicemail system. Yes. See, she, she talked to them this morning, and they did say yes. Okay. Then set it well, up. With this system, yes. Doesn't, oh, okay. It wasn't validating the existing system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm 99% sure the answer is going to be yes. We just need to make sure the switch has been checked. Yeah. Okay. So here's Wesley. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm going to give you a task, Wesley. The task is to get a whole consolidated and see if your 7551 number, if it's busy, can be answered by voicemail. Okay, and I just got Where's a the, representative sent me an email and called, so. With the, with the same system we've got now. Okay. On our existing lines. Yeah. I can that. Now, that's part of this. The, the, that's the stopgap. That we need today. Sorry, I have a call, so. Good. Go ahead. So, you'll be able to get messages, but that does not help that you've got one line, two employees, and a line of messages that you need to return okay. calls to. So, where what seems like the, the, the proper response to having uh, the availability to get two people in each office on a line? That's We're nice. going to need to find out what it costs to buy all brand new phones multi right. line. Capability and what it'll take to get it in there. I think that's probably what we'll need to do and compare that price to what we have in front of us because, like you say, well, this will be in addition to this price. The phone, the phone is an equipment purchase. Right. This is just an access price. I, I was maybe I've got this wrong. I thought you could call in on one line and have it branch off. You're calling in on several different phone numbers. Like that, to me, is two more numbers. Only, right. only one number can be in use at one time. Okay. So if you call the 7770 number and somebody's already on that, right, and you don't have another line for it to drop down to, they're going to get a busy signal. So that begs the question, do we need all the fancy equipment or do we just need those two lines? Because if we add one line to the selectman's office and one line to the town clerk's office. With the present system you got now, then you're going to have to have two telephones on each line. Everybody has two phones on their desk. Okay. All right. Because the, the, the phones that we presently have won't handle two lines. Right. But we could, but we have two phones that we do one for each line. Yeah, and I have brand new set of phones. I drop my landline at home. I could use those in our office. They still handle two lines? Well, I, I guess I'm not getting the contact of two lines. Plug it in. Do so I have a new outlet for that other line? Or no, that does not work that way. Like two phone numbers. That's what she's talking about. If you have a phone that can handle two lines coming in, it will have a button on it that says line one and another button that says line two. If you've got two phone lines coming in, then you can answer the two lines. Now, you've got to be on separate phones. You can't do it. You know, the question could be on one line. You could be on the other. If you only have one line coming in, one number coming in, only one person could be talking at a time. Everybody else calling that line will get a busy signal. Or go to voicemail if it's set up. If it's set up, yeah. If you have, normally what the phone company would try to do is you've got 7551. They'd try to give you 7552, 7553. They wouldn't list those numbers. 7551 is busy. 
to switch its phone company would automatically send it to 5-2. If that was busy and you had a three-line phone, it would send it to 5-3. But that's, you got to have those lines in order to have, you can't be talking on 7-5-5-1 to be just people at the same time. It doesn't happen. And then for those, what Brian just described, those roll down numbers behind the scenes are a different price tag than what you got. Because you got a hard line coming into the building. That's what that is. A right. roll down number is less expensive than, because you're not, you're not dialing into a roll down number. Do you speak yep. to them about roll down? I didn't know. I just asked about pricing. Uh, yeah, they don't have roll down numbers. Can we get someone in here from there? Uh, this person represents our town the government. Uh, the we government can spend a lot of time this morning discussing this, but we need data. Right. I'll be glad to call and update. I can think of a salesman can come in here and go over what we have, tell us what we'll tell him what we want to do, let him give us the package instead of us spending about guessing. Or we do a phone call and not yeah. have it in here. We could whatever, but we're yeah. testing right now. Yep. Well, we could communicate as if, you know, and provided you know what questions to ask, get those, those prices. If we need to do a conference call, we'll do that. You know I, think what to ask. I think the decision today should be to call the phone company and activate the messaging system if yeah. the line is busy. Yeah, that's that's first and foremost, and then pursue. The multi-line option and let's find out what this is actually would cost to do this and hopefully we can have that answer by next week so that we can make a decision and try to get the office functioning up to the, the level it really needs to be at so okay just uh real quick uh can anybody hear from ron where we stand on the coal patch uh i haven't talked to him about coal patch because they've been out there uh trying to fight with the Pine River culvert, and it's been raining on and off these various days. Um, so they're, they're out there again this morning. I saw them yesterday late afternoon. Uh, right. It's an ongoing thing. It's, it's just so jammed up in there, and I think the culvert might be peeling back as there might be multiple sections, and it's just little short sections. So they're getting down in that culvert in the water with the chainsaw when I, when I left. So... Um, wasn't really the best time to ask before patching. Oh, I know. It's just I got a call about someone asking about it. Oh yeah, no, I didn't so, going around town. Yeah, they need to get back to that, and the grading is still going on. So yes, um, I'll be touching base with them. I'll try. Uh, and Tom, just as you mentioned that, I'd like a reminder for everybody in the audience on the phone line. Facebook is not the official communication to report problems of road activity. Like the Beaver are working on Pine River Road, yep. you need to call the town number on the town website for roads to be able to do that reporting. Please. <laughs> That's it for me. Uh, all right. Chuck, you've got a whole pile of stuff in front of you today. I'm excited. What do you got? All right. So I sent the information over on the U.S. Wildlife Service for the Beaver stuff. Yep. Um, I'm actually thinking for some of the smaller culverts, we ought to look at doing a steel grate scenario. That's the least expensive way. Pop it in front of the culvert, put a couple of uh, bars there to hold it in place, and deal with it that way. At least then they're not jamming inside the culvert and filling it up. It doesn't mean they're not going to try and jam the grate up, but that'll be a lot easier to dig out than try to punch through the culvert. Um, I don't think the big culverts like the one on Pine River being a five-foot culvert, that's not going to work. I just think there's too much going through it. Um, but the smaller one, the smaller one on Clough Road, I think would be a candidate. The smaller one on Townhouse Road would be a candidate to be able to do that thing. Um, even after we get the water down and the trapper is able to get back in there on Pine River Road, because of the volume of beaver that are in that bog, um, we're going to have a continuing problem. So I'm thinking we're going to have to think about a longer term solution which is some kind of a fence system in front of that culvert. Um, and I think we ought to look at that over the next month or two to find out what we want to consider doing there. Because all the systems that are 
in that U.S. wildlife document have pluses and minuses relative. All right. None uh, of them are simple. Yeah, I, I went through that document, uh, and um, I will say that uh, Ron and his son were, you know, this morning said that um, uh, our trapper did stop over and have conversations with them on some of this. And Ron used to put grates in front of certain culverts in yeah. the past. Like I said, probably not five footers, but he did say did say he has some kind of grates, something to do with his trucks, and um, he thought that they could, uh, at least in the short term, put a grate in front of the Pine River culvert um, once they get it cleared. So maybe that'll help in the short term. But then we're going to have to probably look at a longer term solution. And I, he's he's willing to do grates around town. You can purchase them, or maybe yeah. he has something because he put them together before. I think he used chain link back in the day with the man line on, and put pull them in out. Um, so the, the trapper did lay the traps the other day, yeah. and what happened was the water's so high that the beaver came in over the top of the traps, bagging and stuff, and snapped the traps. So he's, he can't actually do any of the trapping until the water level gets back down to somewhat near normal. And I was listening this morning, I guess we get another inch and a half of rain coming later this week, potentially. So being able to put a grate or something in front of it to keep them from plunging up, because that was only a week and a quarter from being completely cleaned out to over half full again. And Mike said there's, there's multiple beaver that are working on that. Yeah, and, and the um, Pine River COVID, I don't think it was completely cleaned out because they, they just couldn't get it. To, there's some obstruction in, in the here. middle of it. And I still believe that there was uh, some years ago, um, they put something in there and I think it's metal and it was to brace up that culvert and buy time for a repair. And um, until somebody gets in the middle of that culvert and can tell me that this, it's not there, I'm thinking that we have a man-made obstruction in there that's just compounding the issue and the, trying to take a log and push all the beaver material, it's just binding, it's all catching in there. You got a yep. choke plate. That's why, um, you know, the, the getting in there with the chainsaw. So hopefully we'll find out. And then if we can get it cleaned out, I think we can get the water level down to a reasonable point where we can at least put the grade in and uh, maybe have a chance of trapping some of those beavers. But your book, the guide that you sent over, um, I liked a couple of things there, kind of putting a, a, a box-ish kind of thing out in front of it, and then the pipe that goes further out. I like that, and, and, but I didn't like the idea of putting another yeah, um, containment area about that. Just let that other COVID dump, but I don't know. It's, That's a longer-term solution. Uh, uh, <laughs> Near-term, I think the steel uh, grates will help us because they're working at it so fast right now that they're plugging it back up in less than a week or week and a half. So at least we get the grate in there. If we need to clean it, it'll be a lot easier to clean it than try to punch through. Uh, if, you, if we can get something in there that we can just lift out with the excavator, yeah. that would really be a good thing. So, yeah. But I did have that discussion this morning All with right. Mark. So um, Townhouse Road, where they dug it out last or a week and a half ago, no activity back in there yet. Um, I did go down to Clough Road by the line, yeah. and that one's 25% plugged up again. So the beaver are working in there. But the water level is low enough there that he can actually go in and do it. So I gave Mike the information yesterday on that one to go in and take a look at it. All right. Beaver beaver report for the week. Um, <laughs> you hold. <laughs> yeah. Transfer station. Um, Mark did find the evidence of the four um, covers that are supposed to be locked. Every one of them had a padlock in it that was wide open and rusted to the point it can't be used. So we need to purchase four new locks. And if nobody's got an issue with it, I'll order those this week and we'll get those down there and get those four units locked back up as part of that monitoring. Um, I wanted to get down. It was raining yesterday, so we couldn't get out there to kind of look at them. Uh, it makes sense. But I guess one of them is a combination lock, and I brought down um, bolt cutters. I was going to go out there, but again, at the time it was there, it was raining pretty good. I said, I just can wait. I'd like to get out and look at them. Um, you want to wait on the lock, son? I'd just wait until just, just, just a bit. I want to go out and see them. They probably all do need to be locked. I don't, you know. Well, there's only, 
out of the eight or nine that are there, there's only four of them that require locks. So it's not the ones that you can see directly from the landing area. Right. So these actually have metal casings over the PVC pipe with a lock on top. Interesting. And I can understand why the guy wrote us up for it, because the locks were just sitting there. They weren't locking. I thought Mark said they were the metal pipes. There were metal pipes coming out of the ground. Yep. They were drop pipe with the PVC. Is but there's there's PVC on the inside of it, right. but there's a metal cover on the metal pipe. Right, yeah. And the metal cover on the metal pipe is what we got written up for. It wasn't locked. Right. Should we be doing something to keep these locks from rusting apart? Like, you know, should there be some other covering over that just to access the lock? I think they sell weatherproof locks. They get that big rubber. A lot of times it's yellow, even got a thing over the keyhole you gotta move to That would be okay. About, you know, when I mean, when you start taking a look at it, I'll do some homework on the locks. Yeah. I mean do the homework on the locks. We'll probably okay. we'll, I am sure we'll lock them back up. I just wanted to I haven't seen them. I just feel more comfortable having a look at things before I say yeah. Okay. Let me just make a note. Since you're on locks, um, keys, whatever I got for keys for the transfer station don't work on the locks out there, the gate locks. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm in the market for a key. Uh, but other than that, I, I was also considering there's a lot of things that lock down there. So the keys I do have, I've got to go down and see if they actually fit anything. But I'd like to make sure that we have keys for everything down there. Say, Say if we had to go down and give access to any, you know, to maintenance or whatever, whether it be the shack or, I don't know that they lock the compactors, but um, I'd like to make sure we have a good set of keys, at least a full, complete set of keys for everything down there. So you, there should be a key for you. It must be in the lock box here, because when I purchased those two new locks last yeah. year for the gates, yeah. we come and keyed them, yeah. and I bought enough keys for each of the selectmen, as well as the office, as well as the guys up at the transfer station. And I bought a couple of extras, so there should be something okay. in the box. Great, I'll grab, grab one before. Um, you want to put one in the box, box? Um, I believe Mark did do that, but I'll check with him tomorrow to make sure that he did or didn't. It's a fire department box. It's a fire box, then probably it has not been updated. Yeah. So we'll grab two but, keys before. But I think the I think there's extras in there because I had extras made. All right. Um, I reviewed the documents from the budget chair around planning strategies for worst case scenarios. Um, I don't think we're there yet, but um, it presents an interesting discussion scenario with basically shutting the town down, and I don't think we're going to be able to do that, but somewhere between what's on this paper and what we're doing today was where we would end up. Um, I don't think we ought to dive into it as far as a work session item until we see what's going on with the governor. That's from Dave Strong. Yeah. Um, so until we see what's going on with the governor and extensions and opening up stuff, I think we ought to hold off on this discussion. I think. All right. I, I just to touch on that, I would I would say there are probably a handful of items that we may may be worth conversation but not in the moment. Agreed. Um, for the RFQ for Bailey Road Culvert, we ended up with eight engineering firms. Uh, one of them actually sent a CD so I came in and got it, went home and converted it to the online. So like we had talked about, everything's in the Dropbox account. The thing we didn't count on is the fact that Tom can't get to it. Oh. So um, I'm going to try and come up with some toner on the next day, and I'll go in and I'll print out each of those documents. A couple of them are too big. They're like 20, 25 megabytes. There's no way it's going to be sent over the Internet. Uh, most Internet systems, will, the email system will knock it out. So I will email the Excel review sheet to everybody. So you've got that. I won't bother to print that one. That one you should be able to get into and, and be able to, to print out. 
and I'll take the RFQs and I'll try and figure out a way. In your case, I'll just print them so you've got them. Um, Mike, have you tried to go in and check and find out if you can get into it? Uh, I have. I, I quite frankly haven't. I think I've done the other drop boxes. I may not have accessed this one. Just try one of them. I mean, you don't need to try all eight of them. If you can get in with one, you'll be able to get into all eight. If you can't get into those, let me know, and I'll right. make two copies of everything um, so that we've got it. So, so on this side. Sally and Katie have got their access points, and Sally said she was good, so I'm assuming that means she got it. I'd be surprised if I couldn't get in because I've gotten into several other drop boxes before as long as I have the link. Well, my computer is only a... You got an Apple. Yeah, an Apple. It's only 10 points. Yeah, you know, the operating system is... The version of the Mac he's got is an older Mac, and they stop updating it with the software systems. Yeah. So when Tom would just try and do it, it told me he had to upgrade the system, but he can't upgrade the system because it's open. Yeah. Um, on on this, just this uh, the Dropbox and the reviewing. Um, my thought were maybe it'd be best to do this collectively to go through all of these because it's so it's new to all of us. It's a whole new process, and there's going to be a lot of information it's to gonna, digest. It's going to take four or five hours to go through all eight of them with the score sheets. That's what I figured. So um, my hope was that we could meet tomorrow because we have to do it this week. Um, I don't know what everybody's going to do it by Thursday to. night. So yeah. Either we do it today, tomorrow, or Thursday. I'm open, whatever. I mean, well, we don't have the things to print off of me today. But... I, I'll figure out how to get some toner in if I have to print them all in color. We can, I'm going to put them all if you want to. That way, if there's any issues, we still got Thursday morning. So. Good point. How about them? No, you know what I can do? I can actually download those to a thumb drive, and I'll bring the thumb drive down here and have Chris print them from here. That way I'll do it. So I'll, I'll do that way. As soon as we get done the meeting today, I'll go home and I'll make the thumb drive and I'll bring it back down. Okay. And that way, and then as soon as she's printed them, she'll call you and let you know they're here for pickup. Well, do, you want a, the, do you want a version too? Uh, yeah, I figured maybe. You, well, it's uh, up to what Print you guys want to do. What do you want? Do we want to meet and work collectively on these? I would like to. I think it'll be easier to do that because yeah. it'll, 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 it, if we've had the discussion on our scoring part of it and we're comfortable with it, it means the call with the state should end up being a smoother call and not as long relative to some topics. Yeah, yeah I, and I, I think if we all, with all this information, just to make sure we've all seen all the same information and, you know, what, we're all on the same page. Uh, I hate to miss something and miscalculate because you guys are looking at something yeah. I overlooked. So. All right, then I'll, I'll get that back down here and I'll have Chris just let you guys know that the hard copies are ready. Thanks. Take a look at them. What's our... Do we have a time for is tomorrow a good day, Chuck? Yep. Yeah. That'll work. Okay. Guys signed off for this, you know. There's big money in this job. Nine up see you at nine o'clock one one? Yeah, overtime. All right, nine in the morning. Uh for the review of the RFQs and the scoring, internal scoring of those partial scoring. Um the Christopher P. Williams contract. Yes which is the hourly rate contract. So what this is, it's the historic preservation consultant that we've previously worked with and are working with on the town hall project. One of the things that came out of our recent denial of one of our grant requests was a follow-up call with the executive director of the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance. And her review of our entire application thought the whole bit. We got back a fabulous, application that was her quote word we actually scored even though we knew we were a long shot in getting this anyway because it was more around a forestry redevelopment grant we scored in the upper middle of the ratings um there was just four and a half times the amount of requests and there was money therefore we didn't we didn't get it and I asked for recommendations on so what would be one or two things that we could do to improve are standing with grants that we're applying for to the state and, and the federal government. And she said there was only one real issue. She said most, because of all the volume of grants going in right now, what's happening with the professional reviewers and the industry reviewers that become part of the review teams, 
they're looking to see what expert and professional guidance you have along the entire way. So that they don't want to basically rely on you being the project manager, they want to basically rely on an expert. Um, so we need to, in phase one for the LCHIP grant we're going after, we're looking to do a lot of stuff on the first floor of the library. And part of that is configuration and reconfiguration of some of the library, but also what the ADA bathrooms would look like, fire stairs, elevators, anything like that. We need to have a plan as part of that to be able to say, as part of our grant request, here's all of the professional information we've got. So I've actually got an updated HVAC engineering study coming. Uh, Teresa uh, Swanick years ago worked with a firm under another grant to have a very in-depth review of that building done. I contacted the same firm for a lot less money. They're going to update that entire report for us. So we'll actually have a completely engineered heating and air conditioning and moisture control system report. Um, that vendor has also talked with our historic preservation architect. So there's this coordination with making sure that we're getting the right information at the least amount of money. Um, the other thing I need to do basically, the eight windows for the uh, historic window preservation have been pulled out. So what this is basically, it's a $20,000 contract. 10,000 of it's town money, 10,000 of it is the Moose Plate grant money to restore the sills and the windows. So they're double hung windows, so it's, it's, it's literally wheel weights, I mean, the, the weights in the windows, window weights going back in, ropes. Uh, there's a couple of them that don't have hardware, and they'll have new hardware put, put on to match what's there. And uh, those windows are actually out right at this point over at um, Jacob's Glass in Winslow, Maine, where they're being redone. And we're looking to see if we can raise another uh, six or seven thousand dollars to do the other, uh, actually, fifteen thousand, I'm sorry, another fifteen thousand to do the other five windows on the first floor. So the goal, hopefully, is by year end, we actually have all the windows redone on the first floor of the building. Um, and that will line up with, again, the LCHIP grant request that we're in the process of beginning to put together. And speaking of LCHIP, um, I talked about the guidelines that, that we needed to review and sign the document. I had some follow-up uh, emails with um, one of the managers over in that office in Concord who said, hold on, signing the document we were about to sign saying, yep, we've read this stuff because they're updating all of the forms for the 2020 grant cycle, which will be about mid-May when I'll get access to that. And he just said, because you got time, just hold off, don't sign it yet, wait till it comes out. He didn't know if we were making any changes to that form or not, but he, we will need to sign the latest, greatest form, so we'll hold off on that one. I think it's because, like a college test, I was cramming at the last second this morning <laughs> reading that thing. <laughs> well, I, I, when we just did, we just did the letter of intent to apply, so you've got to be approved to even apply for the grant. So I wrote that last week, and when I because I'd also written it the year before, and when I got in and looked at it, they actually made very minor changes, but enough that you couldn't use the exact same form year to year. So we did get approved uh, after about 24 hours to be able to go in and do the application itself. So we are eligible to apply for the LGM grant money, which will be roughly $165,000 match to what we've got uh, for funds. Uh, we received the uh, Peniel environmental report on Pound Road, um, and we received the asbestos abatement uh, bid to go with it for $10,500. Um, question I have is, do we want to spend $10,500 on asbestos removal because it looks like a lot of the underlying, uh, well, what I would call tar paper, but whatever is underneath the shingles on the roof, a large chunk of it is asbestos. So they've got a, they, it's a pretty big job to do the removal. So you want to take a look at the report more, because the report was rather lengthy, so I don't know if you want to look at it in more detail. 
Yeah, I, like I said, I was trying to pull that up this morning. And I got sidetracked and I didn't do it. I did look at it on my phone, which wasn't the greatest. And I did go out to the property and look at the property. Um, it's a lot of money for what I'm seeing. And it begs the question, do we want a second opinion on removal? And it also begs the question on what does a roofer do? I mean, these are shingles, and even on the side of the building, there was some of this really old, reminds me of my childhood, the, the shingles. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that might be part of the asbestos. I, the report is, is a state-level report, so I, I would think the companies are pretty much doing the same lab testing hmm. and same overall report. One of the things I was thinking is taking that report and going to a couple of other companies and saying, give us a quote. For removing the asbestos based on these lab results in this report. Well, that's that's that where I we get a, a more competitive view of what's what's there. Yeah, do I have a question on the on the windows? It says they need to take out ten windows or something and bag them. Yep. Well, I'm thinking, what on the windows would have asbestos on it? The caulking. Yeah, I, was, I, I read it before further. It said. Yeah, because they actually took samples of what was there, and samples came back with asbestos on them. And then on the roof too, there was architectural shingles yeah. on most of that roof. Well, they, asbestos wasn't out when architectural shingles came out on the market. But it's not. It's the underlayment. When you read it, it's, it's it, there's an underlayment that's in there somewhere. It's the underlayment's the issue, not the shingles. I know on the back side of the building, it's layered. It's by two layers anyway. And that may be where it is. It, so it's not. It did at a thousand square feet. That whole roof line for both buildings is way bigger than a thousand square feet. So it is a smaller version of it, and it could be that one one roof. I just thought it was a lot of money, and I don't know. It just asbestos is not cheap to remove. All right. We've got lead paint issues. Lead's the same way. Can't we put it on the market as is? Just if we get ten grand for it, I mean, or whatever. I'm just throwing that number out there, crazy number, but ten bucks. Yeah, I mean, that way we've washed our hands with it. You know, let known that there's asbestos, whatever else, whoever the potential buys. It doesn't cost us anything with the realtor. They just take their commission if they sell it. I mean, we don't have nothing to lose, actually. No, I mean, from a standpoint, we would be basically going through the processes and see if we get somebody willing to do it. Because I, I quite frankly don't think that lot, once they pull that building off there, that is not a buildable lot. If they use the same footprint, I believe they can build. That you know? They can use the same footprint if it's a if, if it's a replacement. All right. The problem is it's gonna to have to be a wetland study done anyway to do anything on it because of the proximity of that brook to the building. Well and that would be up to the buyer to yep. find that out too. Yep. You now as yep. disclosure we have, you know, we've got to follow a disclosure form yep. to put it on the market. So after after uh -huh. going out and looking at what you had uh, mentioned about the brook, I hadn't seen that before. So when I went out and I saw the trash in the brook and the size and nature of the brook and its location, I would probably really not want to see a property get built on there again. Uh, that's just me. Uh, but Brian, I think you had something to... I just read the report and I was kind of flabbergasted at the price for removing a asbestos. I understand it's expensive. I think you all know that I bought a piece of property about 10 years ago and had Dan Lee take down a building that was on it. He wouldn't take it down until it was an asbestos study. He gave me the name of an individual that came in and did the study and also removed the asbestos. I might call, if I was you guys, I might call Dan Lee and say, do you have a recommendation on someone to remove the asbestos um, and see if he doesn't have people that he works with on a regular basis, because he takes a lot of building down as his whole business. Uh, and, and that's my original point was at that price, I'm very uncomfortable with that. I want another opinion or other. Well, I want at least a couple more proposals. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and the other thing is the asbestos in the windows, it's in the caulking. That's not a dust kind of thing. You know, when you take off some of the the, the insulation around old boilers and stuff, that asbestos, you break that stuff and it goes dust everywhere. It's horrible, right? When you're looking at shingles, chances are that underlayment or a shingle 
it's not the same animal. I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking at this, and I think that price is crazy money. But maybe I'm we'll, we'll get, just out of touch. We'll get, a, we'll get a couple more proposals. The night we've got, we've got the state report. Yeah, that, right. That's that is the quote unquote RFP for what we're trying to do. It is yeah. expensive. And at least on the asbestos that was in the place that I had torn down, had to be taken to Canada to dispose of. Oh, wow. Um, so it, it is pricey, but I was flabbergasted at that price. Yeah, that price is. And Brian's idea of contacting Dan Lee and see who he. Sure. Yeah, shoot. and I've got the contact. I'll reach out to him. Great. Excellent. See what we can do. It's not getting worse. Let me just make a note. Okay, uh, town email. Um, yes. I worked on it yesterday. There's something that's not right that's not set up correctly. So I've got a call with my tech guy today to see if we can figure out why the simple directions that not only he put together, but also Teresa's software package put together, neither one of them work. So uh, we will try and figure that out today. And as soon as I have that process done, then it'll be step-by-step -step instructions on how to go in and set it up on each of your email systems. I got a call on that one this afternoon. Um, we talked last week about sand on bridges and stuff, and I happened to go across Huntress Bridge in the last couple of days, and there is a lot of sand on either side of that. So I didn't know whether we were gonna have Randy look at blowing it off with the water, or whether we were gonna have it um, swept off or we're not going to do anything at all, but I think we, we brought it up. We need to come around with some kind of a discussion and close the loop on it for this year. You want to talk to Randy since he's here, uh, Chief? No. Is that something that we can just use the fire hose to blow that sand off the sides of that bridge, or does it need to be swept up, you know? I, I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it was about a half inch in some areas. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was probably a foot and a half wide on either edge. Would, would you have concerns about using the equipment to, to wash off a couple of these bridges, that, you know, like Huntress Bridge, maybe Elm Street? All right. Well, if you uh, feel comfortable at least exploring that, then get back to us if, if you're comfortable with doing it. Otherwise, we'll have to make other arrangements. Okay. No, really? That's it? That's it for today. Yeah. I've been uh, making calls and uh, reached out to the, um, the folks at DES that we're presently working with about the potential of another uh, grant for CWSRF, which is the stormwater management. Uh, and that was originally for Pine River Road culvert. Problem now is, will we make it that long? And we may or may not. Um, should we have to replace the culvert in an emergency? Um, that's probably what we'd end up doing is just do just that and pursue the grant going forward and maybe down the road we can get some funds to replace that with a better unit because if we just go in there today, if that culvert fails, we're going to end up putting probably roughly a five-foot culvert back in place and just keep the get our road maintained and run open again. And um, long term, we're probably be looking to talk to DES about what we could or should do there. And certainly if we had a box culvert, more of a clear span, maybe that mitigates some of the, the activities that the beaver is likely to cause for problems. So um, I've got uh, some feelers out to this, the um, uh, folks, the Sally Sewell and company on that. Uh, they don't usually do that part of the grants uh, cycle portion, I guess is another division. So um, we'll be finding out more about that, of uh, infrastructure grants. 
Um, let's see. I don't have a lot today. I've got a few things that went in front of the town's attorney. For the most, you guys are up to speed on um, some of that. I did talk to Mark yesterday about our operating hours at the transfer station. And that, um, ideally, I would like to see a stagger of uh, some employee hours a little, essentially coming in about 15 minutes early, one employee to open the place up, end their day 15 minutes early, have a second employee, you know, stop 15 minutes late and do the final close up. Um, it's at least through this pro time when we're probably going to have some financial issues. It cuts off a little bit of employee time, not a lot. Uh, we go from operating, say, on a Saturday and Sunday for nine hours a day uh, to the eight, uh, eight and a half hours that we are actually open. Um, I think Mark understands and is, is going to talk to the guys about that. It's a minor change. It doesn't save the world, but we are trying to make sure that we don't have to furlough people here at the town. We want to keep our folks employed. Um, so we, we went over a, a bunch of different things there at the transfer station, and we're going to need to go down and spend some time, like we said, to looking at a few things down there uh, procedurally. One of the other things I talked to Mark about was uh, comfort level in opening up for doing business with demo and such. My concern here is simply that the town has to function. It is kind of an essential uh, business, in my view, and uh, people are are clamoring to get their demo and assorted things in that they normally would get rid of. And uh, I'd hate to see those after our nice uh, effort to clean up around town start ending up on back roads and, you know, ultimately the police finding somebody and writing about a thousand dollar littering tickets and stuff. Um, so Mark's feeling was that it was manageable. Um, I think we would probably try to stay away from rain days so that everything's done in an open air environment. We have good weather. You can, you know, bring demo and tires down, uh, put the table out there, do everything at uh, more than an arm's length for uh, transactions. Uh, I guess they're, they're looking for the... That, that's my concern, is being able to maintain a social distance when you're dealing with cash. Well, that's... You know, as my, the wind blows down there, it's not like you can just lay it on top of a compactor and somebody come pick it up, it'll blow away. Well, my my thoughts were to put a table out for transactions. They have those, like the junk table, that the soft swap, put it in the long end, and you get on one end, I get on the other. You, I tell you, if I'm Mark, I say that's X amount of dollars and have a paperweight. The person puts down the money, you weight it. Mark's got his nitrate gloves on, he takes it makes change, whatever has to be done uh, at a distance. He seemed comfortable with that. Um, and I know Ossipi is opening up uh, their facility to, for demo. Um, commerce has to happen. It's happening everywhere. Um, we want to be safe about it. We want to be smart about it. But I, I think we're, I, I feel we're going to need to do it. And I understand that the residents are asking him, is, Daily, he's got a lot of uh, people want to get stuff in. I've been approached as well. Um, I think it can be done, uh, but just, you know, it's not, it's not my decision. So I, I wanted to see how where, where you guys were. If there were other precautions we should be looking at in doing so, if we do it, need to hear from you guys. But you said you talked talk to Mark. Yes, on this, as he talked to the other guys. Not at that time. So. Yeah, because I'd want to hear what they I mean, I'm all for it. I think it seems to be done off. It's going to start going elsewhere. We don't want, you know, this is going, going on. Right. It's going on a little longer. But now people are starting to get to the point where, you know, they're going to get rid of it. They, well, that, where else do they go? Well, that's my concern. We don't know how long this is going to last. I need to learn to be able to function in this environment. That's not. But, Chuck? As long as we have a process. All right. And it's documented and explained on what's going to happen. And people get there. I don't think you're going to be able to manage your wet day, dry day. That isn't going to work. It's either open or not open. And if it's a case where basically we're going to do it, then we need to basically have the process on how we can collect the cash and still maintain the social distancing. Well, on a wet day, I don't see what I can do. They have an umbrella down there, put it over the table. 
Well, you're going to have to have some sort of a show. When, when, we, when we add the creativity, when we tell the guys they can come up with a creative way to do this and here's how do you do it, I got a feeling the three of them will figure out how to come up with a process that will we'll meet the criteria. Okay. Um, if we can get through our, our processes tomorrow with our reviews for the RFQs, then um, we may need to shift to the transfer station to engage with the staff down there to see you know, how we can implement this, comfort levels, all of that. Lock your day out, I guess. So do we have the gloves up there? I believe Mark alluded to it. Yeah, so when I was there, it was gloves because he had, because when I was out with the guys, hey, you want to throw these on? I don't touch anything either. So the gloves, the gloves that were being used for the conservation, the Earth Day thing, are too small for Bill. He can't. So we got to buy gloves for Bill. So unless Bill's not going to be handling money at all, we're going to need to buy nitrate gloves right. or nitro gloves for him. Yep, nitrate gloves. If we gloves. can get them. Because we need that. He needs an extra large size. The other two guys are large, and we got those up there. So. Um, I mean, we can actually go to Napa, I should imagine, and get nitrate gloves. I would say the, the, the blue ones are, are not that great and rip pretty easy. The black ones are a little better, um, a little thicker. So. Yeah, conversation with the gentleman down at the transfer station tomorrow, I guess. And okay. Yep. I just don't see how we can keep this place closed. I mean, it can't go on endlessly, so we got to try and figure it out. All right, um, let's see. Uh, I've got to find some time to come in and work with Gwen on properties of unknown owners. She's been uh, getting some of that together and looking at it when she has time so we can get that to the attorney. And I've got to make a run to Epsom at some point to get us more blue bags as we're about out of those for the cleanup if that's coming to an end at this point. Um, we'll meet with. Um, there were 150 bags that were picked up. Uh, we had a number of 175, according to Mark, yesterday. I don't know how super accurate that is, but I gave him my numbers. All right. So between. Steve, Steve went through 150 of them. Oh, is that. Okay. So maybe that's the number then. That was a good good haul for us. Considering that. What was it, 150? 150. And about 350 pounds of glass that are recycled and put into the glass container that would have normally gone into the trash compactor and increased our waste hauling fee. So then the 350 pounds of glass moved out too. I did um, reach out to Matt Sawyer over in Ossipy, the town administrator over there, and discuss uh, the parks and rec and the likelihood that that program is going to stay closed for this year. It was some activity earlier on in the year, and uh, I recognize that there will be some grounds maintenance and equipment type uh, you know, things to be up kept over there. Um, so he's going to approach the Yossipi board to see uh, if we can't come to a, you know, a, a minimal number of what it costs to operate just keep things the way they are, fields, uh, all the equipment up. Uh, certainly, we can't afford in Effingham to have our own program, so um, Matt put together a, a quick number off the top of his head. We discussed it a little, and um, I counted with a slightly higher number um, because after taking in consideration a few things. So he'll present that to the board over there, and uh, hopefully we can at least keep uh, everything, those resources available should we come back to a sort of a normal and have that option for the kids. Uh, let's see, other than that, I uh, uh, did talk to Matt about um, the 91A requests that are coming in from um, uh, Rick Sager's office, that's Mr. Uh, Mr. Jenny and Mr. Edwards, the 91 A's that are revolving around uh, a check and whatever contract issues there were for the bonds, 
back in, I guess that was 2018. So um, he's prepared another letter to go back to uh, Attorney Sager covering the same stuff. I mean, this is essentially what was asked for originally um, without a lawyer. And I don't think a lot of information has uh, come forward since that new information that is. So it just seems to be the same discussion and it's starting to get more in the line of we don't believe you. So I've asked attorney uh, Serge just to basically re respond again, let them know that we're done playing this game. You've got everything, it, enough's enough. We're going through the folder today and I saw about $700 or more charges for, for just having our attorney respond to this stuff uh, in today's folder. So that's where we are. Um, and that's, I have the paperwork here. I should, can share it with the board. But um, that should have come to your office too, did it, Brian? I haven't yet. Okay. I'll make sure that that makes it to you so that everybody can have a copy of that. And that's available. Um, they're public documents, so that's what our attorney said. He said that's it's fair game to discuss and disseminate. Uh, we had a town meeting request on that, and I kind of sidestepped it because I was concerned that maybe I shouldn't be able to say anything, but uh, that's not the case. So anything to do with that is, uh, if anybody wants that information, they can get it. Other than that, uh, I think Chief Burbank is working on the information we provided for false alarms, and I know he's made some strides. So Randy, would Tom forward it out to Brian the uh, copy of, is this what you worked on? That's been edited. It's been edited. It happens to be proof free. Get out the door without him. <laughs> so, with the, the document that I just showed you that said it was prior to the one you just handed out, are there any material changes to it other than wordsmithing or editing? Or? No, not really. Just wording. Because I thought this was very straightforward from a Northern standpoint. You uh, you want to add this to a work session and basically go down through it item by item? Or? Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably best. We can all take this home, read through it, have any thing we want to have questions on, bring those back, and um, yeah, we can follow up in a work session, or we can follow up at next week's meeting if everybody's comfortable with what they find in here. That's why I asked the question I just did. I was comfortable with everything I saw in there. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't read through this yet. It's the first I got it. Uh, I feel a lot better that the, the chief has put this together because, you know, he knows what we should be looking at this town for something like this. So I because guess. it's related to alarms, do we want to make sure that chief police is also Absolutely. weighed in and yeah. hopefully incorporate everything in one document rather than if it can be incorporated into one yes um, Randy is it possible to send it over to Chief Yeah, I guess. Chief Y email address um, that's easy Lisa at that's an easy one all right. If there's, um, you know, pay schedules and or fee schedules in here for violations, which I knew there would be, um, that I don't know how that works for the police. Are they going to piggyback off this, have their own, and and again, we'll have to set up that fee schedule. Need to be emergency services, whether it's fire, police, and I don't. 
Well, I guess the concern would be also is, is there such a thing for false alarms? I know Brian has had some input on this because there's a certain amount of services that you expect from a police department that may not be consistent with what you expect from a fire department. And that allows, we can make that, it allows for that in there. We could use the same kind of process. Okay. Um, all right, then somebody, you have this, Brian? Did this get sent to you? Not the recent one, no. Okay. Have the old one. All right, uh, Chief Burbank, is it? Do you have? Can you get this to the the office? Can you forward this attachment to yeah. Brian? And then at least we have it here. And if we need it to be disseminated to anybody, you have that option. And um, we can take feedback from the police. And if we do need to set up a work session, try to get that established before next week's meeting. Otherwise, if we go into next week's meeting, we don't need a work session. We can prepare this for um, public hearing, which is what it will require. As well as, I think, Chief, are you still, we're still looking to do an inspection ordinance as well. It is. It's all encompassing. Wonderful. It's a complete document. I haven't got to read it yet. Okay. Well, good. All right. Um, Anything else on to I guess that's pretty much it for things that can be that I have to discuss today. My part. Um, is there any uh, input from the staff on any issues here today, ladies? Um, I, yeah. I did want to touch on the absentee voting, depending on where we are in September and November. Um, Secretary Gardner is preparing for the work, and he actually said in an email that um, $3.2 million in federal care to act money funds were received last week and are in the state treasury, and those are going to go toward um, absentee ballot funds, protecting voters as well as um, the staff, election workers. Um, anything that goes above what we spent four years ago. Oh, okay. So there's money for that. That's good because I know there's an, a cost with absentee ballots yeah. that we pay, so that would be helpful. Right. Who knows what it is even going to look like in September? We're going to be open to public vote. And should we be open? Is that going to be in this building or at the September, yes, it's going to be here. Here, okay. So I guess you'll, it's still kind of far away, but. Right, we'll he be. informed a six person committee to um, figure all the, and preparing for the work. Yeah. And that's what I, I was thinking if we have the doors open here at that time, um, you may have some concerns, uh, whether it be equipment or protective gears. Either, whatever you would yeah. have, I don't know, you know whether that's any kind of like shielding thing for people when you check in. Right. Just, you may want to have some kind of a barrier, so like they do with some of the markets, like a plexiglass or something. I don't right. know. They're, they're figuring that all out. Okay, so you'll be updating us with your needs, or okay. All right, thank you, Deanna. Um, and Westby will grab you for a few minutes after. Okay. Chris, anything else that we need from the office? I have like one thing. Brian. And I might have just not heard it. Oh. But did you indicate that you signed the current use application of the signature? Oh, I didn't indicate that. Yes, but with the board all signed the, um, the, the application for current use for uh, the family trust there, though. So I. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, I guess then uh, I'll make a motion to go into non-public on a uh, 91A, I believe, 3, Roman 2A, on employee-related items. I don't know on public, too. And that's non-public. Yeah. Um, that's my motion. Can I say something before you get into that? Oh, well, hold on, because I had it under A and it should be B, but 
Go ahead. Thanks. Randy. Uh, I attended that webinar prior to he did. Um, your question that paid for him on the 15th. Right. It looks like you're going to be filing one 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 So the paperwork should be submitted for your question. Do you need help with that? Am I going to be doing you? Well, I the webinar said it was the emergency manager. Did you get all the Facebook here? Is that May 15th or June 15th? May. May. May 4th, January 20th to April 30th. No, well, it it sounds like you're going to need to come in and get the paperwork to do what you need to do to complete it, or? Yeah. Okay. Now, the one thing that they were kind of vague on is what you heard it or have got information that we need to be experienced as adults in order to qualify for money. Correct. And that, that any segment of application. That's the whole application, like you said. From January to April. Yes. Yeah. Do we got that? We do. The program is that wrong. Okay. I find for like five thousand dollars then. Supplies and the welfare checks and everything else is Okay. Um Glenn, last chance, did you have anything for the board? You were out of the room when I asked. No, I did not. Thank you. Okay. Um in rereading I can it was ninety one RSA ninety one A O and three Roman two A or B and I think A fits uh the best, so I'll stand with my original motion to enter into non public on RSA 91A Roman A. So that's what I have a second from Mr. Hart. Um, all in favor? Chuck Fuller, aye. Uh, uh, Cahal and I. Um, let's take five minutes and we'll get. Uh, so the, when we come out of that, we'll dial back into the phone line? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we did a little procedural hiccup there in the past and we'll open the line back up. Um, Unless we can mute ourselves completely. I can mute it. Yeah, if we completely mute ourselves and then we'll open up. No, that's going no. I want it shut off. I don't want any technical risk of. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we'll shut it down and then we'll open. Line unmuted. Conference recording stopped. Line muted. That's okay, Gwen. So we'll, we don't have a time when we'll open back up.